On this edition of All Hands Television, Staff Sergeant Phil Grondin takes us to Paris Island and introduces us to the drill instructors who train tomorrow's Marines. Welcome to All Hands Television. Real quick, do you understand? Yes, sir. As soon as you get on that plane and you're on your way to Afghanistan, you understand? Know yes, sir. Bless the Lord. Dirty weapon. Awesome. Awesome. I must break your hand. Come down now. Look down. Awesome. That's rust. Awesome. Automatic weapons failure. Get to the right, rust. Get to the right, and rust. I can see talking port arms too. Awesome. Get on your face. It's all oriented towards, we, we, we orient it towards combat. You know, because hey, if you've been told to do something, you told to move or do something, and you don't do it, people can lose lives. I think that the end product, the end state, making a Marine, that's the most rewarding feeling that I think any drill instructor can say that they've experienced, someone that can say that they, they've actually felt what it felt like, felt the goosebumps. Uh, when they watch their recruits walk across the parade deck. I'm doing something to better these recruits. I'm doing something to change their lives in a positive way. Hey, face that way. Aye, sir. Now get in a single file line. Aye, sir. Face that way. Aye, sir. Get in a single file line. Aye, sir. Take your covers off. Aye, sir. Aye, sir. Aye, sir. Aye, sir. Back up. Stop, 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 stop. Like halfway in front of him. Make sure everybody has their portholes off, please. Alright, I'm, I'm gonna take three pictures. One, two, three. Oh, I'm gonna take one. I'm gonna take one. Now you're on budget control. But basically, in a nutshell, they get here, you know, they get on those yellow footprints, they get down here, they come here with all their hair, they come here with their civilian clothing, that all gets stripped away from them. You know, we, we break them down to that basic, take, take away the individualism, take away the eyes, they can no longer say I, and we break them down, we, we start building that team concept. First phase, uh, they are still learning. They're still learning. They're brand new here. They are being taught the basic fundamentals of uh, customs and courtesies. They get a bunch of knowledge classes and physical training as well. They PT an awful lot during first phase. Uh, that gets them into the groove. Get over the park! Get over the park! Ah. Run in place. All the way down. Your arms have to line up just like that. I, I have, uh, I think it's three or four that are still 17 years old. You know, they had to get their waiver to come in and whatnot. And they're and they're young, and you can tell they're young. The younger, the younger kids that typically come here during their summer after they graduate high school, they're they're uh, they're more willing to uh, to do the things that we tell them. They just whine about it a lot more. They cry about it a lot more. They complain a lot more, and they expect sympathy, because I guess that's what they're used to as as they grow up. The uh, the older crowds, the ones that come during the winter and in the fall, they they typically don't have those problems. They just don't want to deal with a lot of the nonsense in their mind. It's a lot of nonsense. I'm a grown man. I have my own kids. I got my own family. You can't talk to me like that. You can't make me do that. Get up! Get up! Get up! Blast the bus! Blast the bus! Get up! Get up! I know you're not gonna be on your day on me. Blast the bus! All all across the board, uh, they come down here. They're, they're gonna get the discipline, whether they're old or young, out of high school or 35 years old. They're gonna get the discipline. Say joint on my head. 
look for a close-up right now. I'll go. Faster. I'll go. Faster. I'll go. Spread. I'll go. Spread. I'll go. Spread. I'll go. Find the ghost. Get out right now. 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 Get out right what was expected of them. Doing everything has an order to it. It's not just like, okay, get dressed. No, you, from, from day one, you need to tell them, like, no joke how to get dressed, because they'll take their, their time, and, you know, we don't always have time to, to mosey around. And... I know he said bar rack. Pay attention, get on the bar rack. Pull it over, they're gonna get it right. Well, smooth this stuff out before you they're gonna just throw it on there. But they wanted to be here. They were hungry. They, they wanted that knowledge. They wanted to experience boot camp. A couple of days later, an awful lot of them are down in the, they're down in the dumps, for lack of a better term. Uh, they don't want to be here. They don't understand what's going on. The, uh, the adjustment has not set in. You know, we got to be moving all the time, you know, trying to, to you know, get them ready for, hey, if we tell them to do something, you need to do it now. And it, it's, it's all oriented towards, we, we, we orient it towards combat, you know, because, hey, if you're told to do something, you told to move or do something, and you don't do it, people can lose lives. So we, we try to relate as much as we can to that, and, it's, and, we, and we orient it and explain it to them, and they, and they start to understand, okay, hey, when you tell me to do this, it's for a reason. It's, you know, instant will and obedience. So everything you do has a, has a purpose. Going into the second phase, we start uh, orienting the training into uh, rifle marksmanship with uh, a, a week worth of classes during the grass week and a, uh, a week worth of the actual firing. And we're the first Marines to recruit C outside of their drill instructors and we teach them everything about their M16A2 service rifles for the first week, all the fundamentals, and we train them to become basic riflemen in the United States Marine Corps. Put those shots right on. You might have to go back to A3 minus two, but that, you'll be fine. Should I come back to A3 minus two first and then nope. drop up? No, nope. stay A3 minus one for tomorrow, and then when you start doing it, if you see that your shots are high, go back to A3 minus two. No, we tell them at the beginning, the first thing we try to do is uh, let them know that we're not their drill instructors, that we're not gonna kill them. And we try to let them get relaxed with us, and uh, kind, of, kind of get down on their level a little bit because they've been shaking up a little bit with their first phase. So we let them know right off the bat to be relaxed and that's the best thing that's going to put that shot in the black every time if they're relaxed. Sling that weapon and walk up. Recruits uh, come down here, get tense up. They're scared to fire the rifle. Most of them, about 98% of them, have never fired a weapon before. So we try to get them to relax when they come down and, and see their PMIs for the first time. It's going to get worse. Here's the target right here. You want the target in the center of the wobble. Good to go? So you kind of just kind of have to guess since it's wobbling. Or you're you right. have to trust it. It's not guessing it. You're trusting it. Nice. Okay? Bring it up. Put it on. Put it on fire. Don't press the trigger. All right, you're fine. You can have your finger rest up. You're going to line your sights as you come down. The more it wobbles, the more time it's there, the more it's going to wobble. Put it on safe. All right, sit down. So during second phase, they actually, uh, they're, they're, they're doing in their minds more marine type things. It's not the knowledge, it's not the drilling. Wow, we're actually down here pulling triggers, seeing rounds go down range, and you know, it's becoming more of a reality to, to them what they're doing and why they're here. Before you do your buckle, before you do your alpha belt buckle, I want you just to have, have your alpha belt through your blouse and just have it hanging there, you understand? Yes, sir. I will give you your alpha belt loop, you understand that? Awesome. Awesome. Yes, sir. The way it's conducted is the, the, the recruits spend as much time as possible getting their uniforms and the squad bay and everything uh, cleaned and ready and pressed and all that. <laughs> On game days, all the drill instructors, the third hats, whatever, get together, they go around there, we call what's called the detail inspectors. 
they go through and they do all the, the fine nitpicking questions and whatnot. Virginia, sir. Yes, sir. Come on, sir. Virginia, sir. Right, we're serial number. 10, 28, 12, 16, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I guess we didn't clean our weapon, did we? Yes, sir. We didn't take it apart so to make sure our weapon was clean, right? No, sir. Disgusting thing. Us. Just crack away from Yes, sir. Us, sir. See, sir. Really? Really? Yes. Now, sir, not holding out of the weapon, right? No, sir. Let go! Us. Okay, I know you grabbed the smallest stock. Sir, five. Five, sir. 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 They have a brain dump and they forget uh, all they've been learning for the past you know, almost 60 days. Yeah, I know you got your IP systems, right? Yes, sir. Uh, you will take your IP uh, overall, the uh, company was uh, impressed with the uh, overall performance of the entire company, not just uh, between 90 information you want it now and there's only one place that puts all the pieces together navy.mil videos images podcasts and audio clips news stories and features all hands magazine tv and radio everything you need in one place if it's navy it's at navy.mil Yes, sir! You see what this looks like right now? Yes, sir! <coughs> it better stay like this. Ah, sir! Until one day, um, you get back to me on train or something. Ah, sir! You get that? Yes, sir! I'm gonna stick. Ah, sir! Now the real training begins. Uh, Sunday 8, going into training day 48, they actually did become third phase, so they actually, uh, they get a red rag now, a red guide on, and that signifies, tells everybody on the base that they are third phase because it's red. So the guide now carries around a red flag. So you see that transition from first and second where he's still really that civilian. Third phase, I mean, he's, he's always getting to that mentoring phase where yeah, it's starting to come out. You're starting to see that Marine, you know, that Marine starting to come out of him. This week, basically, in a nutshell, is the uh, recruit's first indoctrination into uh, any kind of field environment, sleeping out in the field, eating MREs on a regular basis, and just not having those comforts that a squad bay or uh, back home provide. When, uh, when, we, when we start off, friggin', um, the heavies will be up here, spread out throughout the course. I don't care whoever's gonna take the wall, whoever's gonna be like beyond the culverts, spread out, be out throughout the course. We'll friggin', once the heavies, friggin', once the kids get past here, we'll get up and we'll move down there to where the friggin', they rush again past the second half of the course. Just. Your Kevlar and your face better be inside the daggone dirt as you friggin' low crawl, you understand? Let me let me catch one of you lifting up your friggin' head. We're gonna have friggin' problems, you understand? Now open your mouth! The uh, objective of uh, basic warrior training is to evaluate each recruit successfully in uh, the basic understandings of the fundamentals of uh, maneuver under fire, combat formations, hand and arm signals, um, day movement, the, the day movement course, and uh, the night movement course. Uh, the day movement course is an obstacle, it's an exercise that we use to help recruits understand what it might be like in a combat situation. Uh, there's a lot of different obstacles going on, not just physically, but mentally as well. Faster, crawl faster! 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 Faster, PB! Uh, the training is really, is, is very realistic. I know today we're fighting an urban war, uh, so it's not so much that we're in the tree line and we're on the ground as we were in, in, in Vietnam, but uh, the training is still realistic because the, the environment will still be the same. The fog of war, that, uh, that cloud, that dust, the smoke, the debris of the battlefield, all that is realistic. All that is happening right now in Afghanistan and in Iraq. Shut up! You got a it's combat mindset! Drag him off the court! Grab him by the you just died. You're dead. You just got shot. Uh, sir. You're done. No, get down. Uh, get down. Now drag him off the court. Drag him! Uh, Your buddy just got shot in combat! Now get him off! The freaking what? 
Uh, the training is very strenuous. Uh, it's, it's, it's physically strenuous. It's uh, mentally uh, strenuous and uh, emotionally too. Get to the watch. Oh, sir. Oh, get to the watch. Oh, sir. With all the the haze that the drill instructors try to create and make it as realistic as possible uh, by us putting a lot of stress on the recruits, I think for them it's it's exhausting. He's bleeding. Take him to the toilet. Get him out of the trap. Get him out. Get him out. Get him out of the Scream! 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 You got your feet blown off! Scream! You got your feet blown off! Scream! The drill instructors create an environment for them to feel a, a, a sense of urgency, to feel pressure, to feel stressed. And I think that's what makes the training even that much better. The night movement course is pretty. It's very similar to the day movement course. Uh, however, it's a it's a more tactical. It's a more tactical environment. They have to maintain silence. Uh, in the daytime, there's a lot of yelling. There's a lot of screaming. There's a lot of movement on the fire. At night, they're strictly. The focus is to strictly be on uh, re being as tactical and as silent as as possible in order to be a successful move through the course. Get the casualty out of freaking them trash right now. Get him up. Get the, get the casualty out of Killzone. Get me out of here! Help! Help! Get me out of here! Help! Help! Uh, at this stage or this phase in recruit training, um, they're at a mature uh, at a mature state, a mature phase. Uh, they've they've pretty much grown. Right now, they're in phase three. It's an, it's an observation phase where we get to see what we, what all the all the training that they've done throughout recruit training. We get to see the the, the outcome of it. Uh, it involves a lot of field training. It involves a lot of them doing things more on their own. My impression of them is that they've definitely come a long way. Uh, they are a younger group. They're a little bit more immature than the groups that we get in the winter. But I mean, that will come a time. You can tell the difference between when they got here and now, and, and how they respond and how they act and whatnot. They have a, you know, a better understanding of how the Marine Corps works now. As drill instructor, we've seen them grow. We've seen them work well together. They're starting to work in fire teams. They, work, they know, understand what a fire team is. They understand that they need to know the recruit to the left and the right of them, as Marines do to the left and the right. Um, they get the concept of, of working together in buddy pairs. They get that teamwork concept and it ties into to them uh, accomplishing the mission. Five road guards. From last time. Keep it tight. I said run, guys. The training objective of BWT is just to get them a starter into, you know, the low crawls and the movement under fire and whatnot. The primary objective of the crucible is okay, now you're going to do all these missions, but now you have lack of food and lack of sleep. It's a 54-hour mission, and they get a total of, between the two nights, only four hours of sleep. Chow is on you. Do we understand that? Yes, sir. Chow, water, everything is on you. Do we understand that? Chow, son. Chow, son. Chow, son. In my opinion, the most challenging part of the Crucible is uh, that second day. That second day after they, uh, they're on that enormous high on that hike out to the Crucible, and they're looking forward to that first day. So the first day pretty much goes off uh, without any problems, without any issues. But it's that second day after that four-hour nap that they get when they wake up, that they're so slow, lethargic, they're not thinking properly. They, uh, they may not get the counts down the right way or have a great plan in place. What's your plan? Plan. Put them to throw the rope over with the barrel tied on. Get it. There you go. There you go. Watch your feet. Watch your feet. Now you just have to figure out how we're gonna get Rodriguez. There you go. Yes. Yes. All right. Don't let go. Don't let go. Don't let go. Don't let go. Yeah. Time. 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 Time
So how they do? A lot of ideas. A lot of good ideas. It's a little bit too late though, as far as the time's concerned. So, but they they had the gist of it towards the end. They know exactly. They know exactly how to get it through. Get your weapons. Most challenging part of the crucible would be the movement to contact and the ammo resupply points. You got to work together. You have a fire team that you have to get to the end, and then you also have, you know, you're doing the low crawl and then the ammo resupply and whatnot. Down. One of the most challenging parts of the recruits is definitely the, uh, the hike back for the recruits. The, uh, these recruits, uh, depending on what groups they are put into, um, certain days are a little, bit, a little bit more rigorous than others. Um, depending on what they do on the first day or the second day, uh, either way it goes, on that last day that they leave there, they went through everything. They ran the gauntlet as far as physically, mentally, Everything is going to be there. They have they've been pushed to their limits, and now they're going to put all their gear on. You know they have to hike back that the uh, the distance back to uh, to the Iwo Jima monument. Through my mind, I, uh, during the, during the Eagle of Nature ceremony, I feel a, a sense of pride, of a very strong sense of pride that I am I am handing possibly the next commandant of the Marine Corps, the possibly the next sergeant major of the Marine Corps, their Eagle Globe and Anchor, that I am going to be forever ingrained. In someone's, in someone's history, in someone's mind, that I've given myself 100% at all times, and I've made a Marine. graduation we've been to. And how many people in your family are in the Marine Corps? There are three who have been. One is uh, a Marine vet now, he's out. And two, one uh, graduated in June and one graduating tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, here, we gotta go. We gotta move. Best memories, honestly, is uh, family day and graduation day, honestly, because you get, you know, the families that come up, they see their son or, or, or daughter for the 4th for the Battalion, they come up, they see him. A lot of the males, I've, I have males that weren't fat when they got here, but still lost 20, 25 pounds. They're, they're cut, they're, they're, you know, more physique in the, the way they act and whatnot. You'll get the parents, they, they kind of, not in a bad way, but they're like, what'd you do to my son? You know, and then they come up and thank you. That's, that's the biggest impact. When you get the families, you know, thank you for what you've done. That's, that's the biggest impact that I remember here. I, uh, as far as a Marine down here, I've learned that as far as uh, putting out day to day, it's to give 100%, no matter what, no matter how big or how small, your recruits, your Marines are gonna feed off of you. If you come out and you give 110% and you, you don't accept anything else and you show them that attention to detail, that you're gonna strive to do the best, to make things better than, than, than what they were before, to make a difference, that's the biggest thing that I've noticed. I think for me personally, I think there was always something when I was growing up and 
Uh, personally, in my life, I think there was always something. I've always wanted to do great things. I've always wanted to make a difference somehow, some way. I always wanted to, you know, it might sound corny or whatever, but do something to change the world, you know? Do something to, to make a difference in society. Um, for myself, I think that one of the things that, that um, kind of helped me out as far as being a stronger man, a stronger individual for being down here was I, I lost one of my uh, parents at a very young age. So I was forced to kind of grow up and uh, mature very quickly. And I think that's essentially what we do down here with some of these young Marines the, uh, that we have down here. Um, we uh, take them and make them uh, a, a lot more. It's night and day, the maturity level that they are when they leave here. And I think that's one of the biggest things is them overcoming a very hard a hardship in their life. And recruit training is just one of them. So, so far um, in your job here, you've been here a bit over a year, I guess. Um, is it worth it? Yes, it's worth it. Uh, it's worth the sacrifice. It's definitely worth the sacrifice. Definitely. Why? Just the, the, the overall uh, sense of accomplishment, I guess. Just to, to, to go from something I really never wanted to do, honestly. I didn't, I ne at the beginning, I never really wanted to be a drill instructor. And then when you first get here, you're like, wow, did I make the right decision? to you know becoming the senior drill instructor and seeing you know the overall product from the beginning not just having to worry about okay his fingers aren't curled and you know he's not uh, responding the right way i mean i still still worry about it but not to the extent that my you know my heavy and my, my third head worry about it and just seeing overall how this we're kind of watching supervising seeing how they are in the beginning and how they end how they transition and how we we really make marines